Hi, everybody. My name is Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. I'm, I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and Torah YouTube channel. And this is the Torah series where we go over the Torah commandments. We find what needs to be done. We find what need what we need to do, what we should be doing as human beings, as people of the Most High, and what we should be, how we should be living our lives according to what Yahushua said when he said, follow my commands. What did he really say? And that's what we're going to find out, what he really meant by follow my commands. Yep. And the commands of Yah are amazing. They are awesome. And we should be... Uh, we should be basking in their glory and we should be living them up and they should be a cloak that we have across our bodies. They should be a shield that we use and it should be our armor as well as our sword that we need for battle arraignment. And if we do not have that, then we are lacking battle arraignment and battle gear as we go into fight a very capable uh, enemy who is Hasatan as well as a third of all the demons that have been tossed to these lands that have... Uh, been plaguing us and then plaguing the hearts, minds, and souls of our children and of us. And basically, they, they try to take everything good that is from us. And, uh, you know, if you are not keeping Torah, the demons don't care about you. They really do not care because they're you're already theirs. And um, it is the people, is the Torah keepers. And it's very clear when you read Revelations that uh, they do want to make war with the people who keep the Torah. And so they hate the people of Yah. And that makes us an enemy, which is good. And they can do what they wish they could do because our daddy, our father, is way bigger than they are. He has more power. He has more power and probably one iota of a fingernail than they will ever have in their entire existence. And I, I say that but he has way more power than even in a fingernail. So it's just um, one of those comparisons I probably did wrong. But here we go. Um, everyone, how you doing, Kate? Good. 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 Jade? Nicole? Good. Everyone Okay. I always get goods, even though you guys are probably filthy liars. So everyone's like, uh, "Is everyone good?" Yeah, I'm good. doing good. Yeah, doing better. Eli, how you doing? Good. No, no drama. No. Kate's the only one who looks like a complete zombie. A little tired. A little tired. You or Kate? Both. Both. Yeah. So not a lot of sleep here, but uh, we appreciate all of you guys out there, our family, and we uh, thank you guys very, very much for being part of our family. It is a sixth. It is the sixth month. It is the fifth day, and it is the twenty fifth day on our creator's calendar there is one more day tomorrow is preparation day and then it is shabbat and then tonight is youth for yah um if you guys have not um seen this series at all it is um the boys and my boys and we have uh two 18 year olds who are turning 19 soon and we have eli who's uh we seven He's oh 12, 15 sorry 13 12, 13 yeah uh eli uh, are you sure you're not seven Oh, uh, poor Eli. It's all right. We can He's 15. He's 15. 15 going on 7. So here we go. Um, I'm going to take us real quickly over to um, a little ghetto place in Bishu. And I thought, I didn't know if this was, this was, uh, this is just a weird comment. I thought I'd bring it up to us. He goes, Yahoo. And this was on our, um, this was on the Sefer one that I is did. His name God's his, Law. His name is God's Law. And he says, Yahoo is the devil lord. Is also the devil any scripture that causes pain to another is Eva God is absolutely love. I don't even know if this guy doesn't know punctuation. It's not English is first. Language. I don't. I don't know. Just, any Elohim or other God of Bible that causes pain or suffering, an eye for an eye, rapes and causes harm to anyone, uses whether to kill, hurt animals, is not of God. That's of the devil. Huh. Well, wow, this guy's never read I don't know. his, his okay. scriptures. I guess we'll just continue on because I have no idea what he's talking about. Here. Yeah, I know, that sense, was not so. quite um, coherent. What video was this on? Uh, this was on one of the Dr. Stephen Pigeon's terrible translation videos. I don't know, I think the the, what was the what uh, was it? This was on, yeah, this was on uh, Second Thessalonians. And he's so angry I don't agree because I don't know. So he, it says Yahoo is the devil lord. Is the devil? He says Yahoo is the maybe the devil. Maybe there's supposed to be a period there. Lord is also for devil. Um, see, this is that's not true. Lord, lowercase Lord is for Baal, um, but actual that Lord means like master, um, something of the sort. So uh, anyway, he says that, that if you is suffering eye for an eye, he says if it causes pain or suffering eye for an eye, there's a lot of eye for an eyes in the Torah. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things. We we discussed that, and that is what it is: an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Um, I don't know about rapes, um, what he's talking about, or anything like that, um, or causes harm to other animals. I guess that, that's the one piece on that. Um, what do you guys think about that? I mean, you guys, if our creator causes harm to animals, does that make him a monster? Well, no. 
Well, we're not harming. It wasn't harming the animals the way sacrifices were done. What do you mean harming? Like cut you their were, throats. You were killing them, yeah, but it wasn't like like a brutal death. It was just you kill them and they, they had like a peaceful way of killing them. Is there such a thing as a non-brutal death? If um, you're inflicting it on somebody? I'm sure it's brutal to the person that's doing it. I mean, it, like, it's... There, you're still, at the end of the day, you're still, if as an animal, you're still getting your throat cut. It's not going to be pleasant, regardless. It may not, it may be peaceful, possibly, but um, does the hurting of the animals make our creator a monster or something of the sort? No, he said he didn't, he prefers that you just obey him instead of killing these animals. Why do we hurt animals? So Why? We sin. Because we sin. Yeah, this comes back down to one of those pronouns, we. We and I, and if that was not there, then we would not, um have to hurt the animals and so the people i guess the people need to understand that that because we lived in sin it wasn't that yah wants to hurt animals if you think that is the case that is absolutely not the case there's no such there's never ever been a command um in fact we're supposed to take care of our neighbor's animals and even if there's an animal somewhere that has gone astray we're supposed to pick it up and take care of it there's no, never ever been any kind of commandments to hurt animals um but it's just it's interesting to hear the different perspectives that people have and um that was one of them. That was an illiterate perspective, but um, maybe he's different. I don't know. Maybe he's different uh, language or something. All right, so today we are in Deuteronomy 27. It's too late. Uh, I already went there when I was yakking it up. So we are in Deuteronomy 27. And Nicole, how many um, commandments do we have right now? 187? 170-something. 170 170-something. 170 and um, <laughs> I would probably be a liar if I said that I thought we were doing a really good job on this. Uh, because I don't think so. I don't think that you could do a really good job on the first time through on any of these. We are doing a job. And as far as a good job, we will have to proof this and do all of the reproof these. And we will. Um, and so the schedule that we have as a family is we have how many more chapters are in Deuteronomy? 34? Uh, I think 10 more. I think 10, 36. 36. So this should take us almost to next Shabbat, I think. And then we are going to start another series that we have, and it's going to call, be called The Unknown Commandments of Messiah Yahusha. And we are going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we're going to figure out. A lot of people have said that like a lot of those books are um, they're the devil's books or something of the sort, and we're going to go through them, and we're going to go real slowly, the same way we go through this stuff, and we're going to try to bring out the laws. We're going to see if any laws of Messiah Yahusha go against the laws of the Torah, and then we can see what we all think at this. And... Um, I can already tell you, I don't think there's any laws that go against that, just from my old reading that I know of. But maybe when we read it like this, you find out different stuff. So, um, 176. 176. Okay, thank you. All right, so Deuteronomy 27. Here we go. And Moshe, with the elders of Yashrael, commanded the people, saying, Guard all the commandments which I command you this day. So there it is again. First command. Like 40 times? Yeah, we're at, at least. least. Yeah, we're at least in this 40 times. So yeah, there it is again. So guard to the commandments. Oh so man, he, it must not be important if he says it 40 times. It must be really unimportant to these. He's, yeah, he's, uh, he's, it's over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, um, let's go into the next thing here. Um, so Nicole, you got that? Yep. Okay. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over the Ardeen until the land which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you that you shall set up great stones and plaster them with plaster. Plaster? It says plaster in the other stuff. This stuff says, says plaster. The king says plaster, P-L-A-I-S-T-E-R. Oh, well, I was like, and I didn't know if you were reading that wrong or not. Cause it says I plaster was trying to be as literate as I possibly can, and it says plaster. I'm pretty sure plaster. I'm pretty uh, I, yeah, so plaster, plaster, I, you know, it's tomato, tomato, whatever. Um, let's get into it. So Do they use plaster? Huh? I've before? never heard the word place before. So. King has it too. Yeah, but they say Washington when they say the state of Washington. No R, guys. Yeah, there's the, the, everybody from Washington. Where are you from? I'm from Washington. They're, they're, no. Washington, where's that? Where that? You mean Washington? Okay, three. And you shall write upon them all the words of this Torah when you are passed over, that you may go in unto the land which Yahuwah Elohei gives you, a land that flows with milk and honey, as Yahuwah Elohei of our fathers has promised you. Now, hold on here. Um, Let's write the Torah on giant rocks. <laughs> yeah, so basically, this is what this is what we're saying here, is we are supposed to, uh, when they go over, he wants them to guard the commands, and then when they pass over into the Yardin, you set up great stones, and then we're plastering them, so basically some sort of a, a mold stuff on the outside of them, um, and then on the plaster, you would write the words of this Torah. Which is very interesting. So it's that's like going to be a huge rock. Like, 
Writing this thing was a huge ceremony. They can't forget this, right? What did you do before you went to land? I wrote on these giant rocks the words of the Torah. It's like something you can't forget. He's trying not to have these people forget what needs to be written down. It's like such a big thing. Uh, and I'm curious if everybody was literate at that time and if he could write. I don't know I don't if this think is so. I true. Think, I think this is where like, it comes in. People would translate it. People would talk to Or they get all the it. Levites up there on the plastered rocks. What do you got, Nicole? I wonder if it's something like write them on your doorposts. Write them on your doorpost. Um, on this, yeah, I mean, we'll set them on your rocks. It's setting on the rocks. It's is like it? the border of their place, right? It's like the yeah, garden I mean, is the border. Before you go in, yeah, before you go in, you're supposed to set up these rocks. You're supposed to. The plaster is probably white, right? It's like so if, before you get into the land, you need to know these things. You must remember it. Here's how you remember it. And whatever they wrote on these rocks, they must have had good paint because surely the rain would have. Nailed. Well, if it's plaster, if it's still wet, they could have like carved stuff, the words in the plaster. So that's weird because plaster. I don't know. Maybe. I, I mean, I was thinking there was more like a clay plaster more than like a kind of plaster we use today more of probably a brownish mix yeah but I was thinking it was I was thinking maybe like a white plaster and it becomes like a piece of white paper and then they start writing on it because I don't know if they are they going to chisel in the Torah like the, all to this rock into that plaster or they took like a stick and it was like a mud thing it was like a mud and they just took a stick and they wrote on the entire thing it, I mean, it probably took a couple people to do it if That's we read on it it tells you what they're doing with this okay alright we have dog issues trying Kids and dog issues. All right, here we go. Let's go. Four. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over the Yardine that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day in Mount Evil, and you shall plaster them with plaster. Okay, okay, so these rocks aren't too big. Or they had a lot of people to move the stones. That could be. Um, all right. And there shall you build an altar unto Yahuwah Eloheka, an altar of stones. You shall not lift up any iron tool upon them. Okay. Um, we have that before, and this is reiterating that. Mm -hmm. So if you're building an altar, so five would go under, do not build a altar with stones. Is, that, with is, that a, is this a command, though? Well, this isn't, a, this isn't exactly a command. This I don't is, know if it's a command. It's just kind of reinforcing that. This is know. reinforcing that iron part where you don't use any iron uh, iron tool upon them. This is what he told them specifically when they were building their altar and when they built this whole uh, rock thing up. Yeah, that, the only thing I see is that it, it reinforces uh, that we don't... If you were to build an altar, which you should not probably build an altar, I would say, maybe. I don't know, though. I mean, you could build an altar. People, Our forefathers did build altars. I mean, I just would strongly suggest you probably don't sacrifice on them. Okay. You shall build the altar of Yahuwah Eloheka of whole stones, and you shall offer sending smoke offerings thereon unto Yahuwah Eloheka. And you shall offer peace offerings, and you and shall eat there and rejoice before Yahuwah Eloheka. And you shall write upon the stones all the words of this Torah very plainly. And Moshe and the priests... And the priest, the Levium, spoke unto all Yashrael, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Yashrael, this day you are become the people of Yahuwah Eloheka. You shall therefore obey the voice of Yahuwah Eloheka and, to do, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Okay, so 10 is going to go under the guard of the statutes as well. Right, Nicole? Yep. So you have three subcommands already? Yep. 11. And Moshe charged the people the same day, saying, these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When ye are come over the Yardin, Shimon the Levi, and Yehuda, and Yisachar, and Yosef, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Evil to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Okay, what's going on here? I don't know. Why are we cursing these guys? What about the rest of the tribes? Well, he just he said the first ones are good. You come over the Yardin. Yeah, so we got like few good tribes and not the bad tribes. Well, hold on. As we know Reuben, he messed up. Um, but that, but that was what happened to Naphtali and Asher and Zebulun? I don't know. We don't, I, there's was, not, this during the, was this because of the curse that uh, Yaakov gave his kids before he died? I mean, but I feel like the rest of them were above were cursed too. Levi was cursed because of his anger. Well, Levi ended up becoming Leviticus. I mean, he had, that's who the priesthood Yisachar came through. was between two burdens, and Shimon as well was also... Uh, Curse, so I don't know why we're blessing half the tribe and cursing. What did we miss? Did we miss something, did, did, obviously? Did that bottom half, like, go, stay on the other side of the Ardeen? Did they want to go back to the other side where they wanted before? Well, like just Reuben and da Gad. Yeah, I know, I don't maybe know. those guys wanted to decide to as well or something. And Moshe charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you are come over to the Ardeen. So the Ardeen, so the people that bless, you're supposed to 
bless Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Yosef, and Benjamin. I would not. If I was one of the tribes of one of those that were getting cursed, I would not be happy. Well, Yehuda, too. I mean, Yehuda, I don't know. What is really going on? I don't know. And uh, this isn't when Benjamin. Benjamin later got real bad, right? Um, yeah, Benjamin and Judah were together. Yeah. All right. I don't know. And these shall stand upon Mount Evil to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. All right. Well, if you're from that tribe, you got cursed. And the Levium shall speak and say unto all the men of Yashrael with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that makes any graven or molting image, an abomination unto Yahuwah, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and puts it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Okay? Uh, do we have a command? Uh, Not just this, cursed. This be cursed. Yeah, just cursed, cursed be the man. It says, Cursed be the man that right makes any graven of, image. Right down the book of curses. An abomination, yeah. So, I mean, this would maybe go under graven images, but it's... It's more like just a, what happens if you break the man. All right, 16. Cursed be he that sets light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say amen. Or say anyone who dishonors my, their father or mother. says who makes light of his father or mother. Okay, so that's better. Yeah, cursed who dishonors. Okay, so there's cursing. Cursed be he that removes his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say Amen. Cursed be he that makes the blind to wander out of the way. That's evil. And all the people shall say amen. This must have been a big deal, right? Because there's already a thing about the messing yeah, with um, the disabled and blind. There must have been some really ruthless people in the tribe of Israel. Oh, look at the blind guy. Let's, let's mess with the blind guy. That'd be awesome. Okay. Cursed be he that perverts the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say amen. Now, we're, just, we're going over this again. Cursed be he that lies with his father's woman because he uncovers his father's skirt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lies with any manner of beast. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, of the, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. So I wonder if all those tribes that got cursed Did they fell things? under this stuff. Okay. Cursed be he that smites his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that takes reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say amen. Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of this Torah to do them, and all the people shall say amen. Wow, you know, this is this is the Christian thing here, right? If <laughs> the Christians, if you want to know what your future holds for you, um, it's not good. Well, it says, Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of this Torah. Well, we, that right there, if you say the Torah is on the cross, you have just fallen under the Deuteronomy 27 curse, right? I mean, you guys understand this, right? It may not be something big to you or somebody just say, hey, the laws of God are on the cross. But it says you're cursed. And it says not all the words of this Torah. So if we are taking away or adding to, then we're going to be cursed. And that is a huge, huge thing. I don't... Does anyone here want curses? Anyone? No, Raise your hand if you want curses. It says if you don't establish the Torah, I mean, establish the Torah is building it up, right? So to do it. And if you're not doing it, you're not establishing it. You're pretty much rolled at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely rolled. Yep. And we should not be um, absolutely rolled. We don't want to be absolutely rolled. We want to be rolling with Yah, right? We want to be rolling with the man, not Hasatown, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Well, that's it, um, everybody. We have a busy day. Nope. Hopefully, you guys have a busy day. Why are you smirking at me, wife? Because Yah isn't really a man. He's not a man, but uh, he, he's the man. He's our man. He's, uh, yeah, I know he's not a man, but uh, you know what I'm saying, right? Is everyone out there know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I got it. He's, he demand. He might not be a man, but he demand. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, and so, don't forget U3 Yacht is tonight. U3 Yacht tonight, guys. Tune in. It'll be live with the boys. Um, Proverbs what? 20, 23. 23. And how many more Proverbs do you guys have before you uh, Except for 31, so seven. Did you guys ever figure out what you're going to be doing after this? Uh, I think I think James. James, did you guys ever take a vote? No. No. I, was, I don't know if we should go back into Solomon. Should we go back into Solomon? I don't think this? so. I mean, we've heard we've heard all this of Solomon. We're taking advice from a guy that had Came 700 wives. Advice. Yeah, he had 700 wives and turned to... He was like, don't let the little strange woman lead you astray. He's, he's like, like half was, Freemason he like as well. I mean, he's, he's a part of Freemason. I mean, he created like uh, the temple with those two like... Uh, he like mastered like... Boaz he like, he like, and something else. He like put the else. gin in a jar or something. He like they started yeah, the genie thing. Yeah, so. he started putting gins in jars. I mean, this dude was like playing with black magic and, and very evil stuff. So 
Um, I think, I, he I think had, he got too bored or something. <laughs> Got too bored, or he got too too uh, many wives. That too many too wives. Much. Yeah, I mean, how how would you even deal with something like that? So, anyway, I guess that's good. Thank you guys very much to our family out there. We love you guys very much. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for listening in. If you made it this far, may Yahuwah bless you. May He keep you. May He forever shine His light upon you. May He forever find favor. May you ever forever find His grace, and may you forever walk in the Torah and walk in His ways. Thank you guys very much. All right. Shalom. Shalom.